In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a hack for making randomly tossed patterns like these hearts here. I'm using a plugin called Space Fill from Astute Graphics. And that's really part one. It's great for randomly tossing objects like this. And I'll show you how to use it. But if we look down here at this other example, we'll see that if I use just a regular rectangle for containing the hearts when I use Space Fill, I'm gonna see these channels open up in the pattern here. And of course, I can go in and fix those, but it's my hack that will help you to have more interlocking tiles, like the first example. So first of all, let's talk about how to use this plugin. Let's back out here. I have an example right here. You first need to have a containing object, and then you need to have the objects that you want to toss inside of that shape, and then select them both. And in the Space Fill panel, just click on Make. And by the way, to get out the Space Fill panel, you'll come to the Window menu, Astute Graphics, and right down here, Space Fill. From here, you can make adjustments. So if we look here in the panel, down here at the bottom is Multiply Filling Art. So we can tell Space Fill how many copies we want. I can get fewer copies here and open up more space between the hearts if I want to, or add more copies. We can vary the opacity, we can vary the rotation. So right here we're seeing 360 degree rotation so that they're really tossed. If I made this 30, you would not see quite as much of a difference there. So I'm gonna change this back to 360. You can also choose to vary the size. So right now it's at 1.1 and we can see a little bit of difference, but if I nudge this number up, I get a lot more variation. For this project, I want my hearts to be all the same size. You can also decide to resize all the filling art at once. So everything gets uniformly scaled like that. Right here, we have the method. Do you want these centered on the center point of the object or on the outlines of the object? So let me just show you the opposite. If I come here and change this to centers, this works well with the uniformity slider. So this is really about you know how uniformly these are gonna be tossed or spaced apart. And if I have the lowest number in uniformity, you'll see some overlapping happening and some larger gaps in some places, smaller gaps in other places. But I can go and crank this all the way up to 10, and we're seeing a lot more uniformity in the spacing. But then if I switch the method from centers to outlines, you can see they start to sort of magnetically repel each other. So the spacing looks a little more even between them, which is generally what you would like in a pattern like this. And once you have all those parameters set, you can just come here and click the randomize button over and over again to get the sort of tossed arrangement you want. And you can see there are clusters that are all one color. This would of course be different if I had more colors in my hearts. But this is the type of thing I can edit later if I want to pretty easily. What this seed number means here is it's kind of like a number that saves your randomization. So if I decide, you know what, I like this randomization here, then what I'll do is take the seed number, select it and copy it to my clipboard, Command or Control C. And then when I continue randomizing here, I've got that number in my back pocket in case I decide, you know what, that is the best option I've seen so far and I wanna put it back here. So I'll just uh, highlight that number and then paste to get that randomization back, hit the tab key, and now I get back to where I was. So those are some of the basics of using Space Fill. And when you have this square here, you can see up in the top left corner, this is a Space Fill object. So until I expand this, I'll be able to come back here to the panel and continuously edit this, change the spacing and the randomization. But when I'm ready to use it as a pattern, I can expand it by clicking on this button here. And now it's no longer a live space fill object. So I can close this panel and now I can make it into a pattern. So here's the part where, you know, if I start tiling these out or if I move them into pattern editing mode, I'll have to deal with the edges and how they're looking a little bit more uniform than the rest of the pattern. And that wouldn't be too hard, but I've created a shape to contain my space fills that actually 
fits together like a puzzle piece and kind of eliminates some of that edge problem there. So I have this wavy puzzle piece shape here that I'm using as my space fill object. And you can see when I tile this out that it's allowing this interactivity between the tiles so that we don't get those channels and lines between the tiles. So now I'll show you how I made this puzzle piece shape. So if I back out here, we can see this is a square that has an effect applied to it in the appearance panel. It's got the zigzag effect. If I turn this off, you'll see it's just a square and the zigzag effect adds these ridges here. So when you wanna do this, let's go ahead, I'll move this off to the side and we'll start from scratch. Okay, so I've got a square here, then I'll come into the appearance panel, FX, and choose distort and transform and zigzag. Here in the panel, I'll just add ridges per segment. I wanna make this an odd number, so I'll switch it to five, and I'm gonna make these round by clicking on the smooth option. And then to make it more interlocking, I'll just change the size so that those waves are a little deeper. And then I'll click OK. So until I expand this, really the path is just a plain old square. So let me go ahead with this selected and go up to Object and Expand Appearance. Now I have paths that I can edit. And if I just sort of option drag out a copy here, you'll see this is not going to fit together like a puzzle piece. So I've got a little editing to do. I'll select it and use the C shortcut, C for cut to get the scissors tool. And I'm just gonna cut on these corner points right here, one there and one cut here. And then I'll get rid of this part of the line. So really I'm only dealing with a corner here. And then I wanna make this corner or these two sides of the square into that puzzle piece. So I'm gonna borrow this side here. I'm also gonna borrow it again, just dragging it down in a straight line, holding shift and option or alt to copy it. And now I've borrowed the top that matches the top and the right hand side that matches this side over here. And now I'll just cut away. So I'll grab this one here and just cut this extra off here. Again, using the shortcut C, cut with the scissors tool and then select and delete that extra segment. I'll do the same down here, selecting this line here cutting it and deleting the extra segment. All right, so now I have a square that's got these wavy edges that will fit together like a puzzle piece. And I'll just join them so that it's all one shape. So I'll select it all and use the join shortcut Command or Control J. And you can find that here in the object menu, Path and Join. And what that does is it joins the open endpoints that I had on every corner here, there and here. Of course, this one, I'm not joining anything there. And it may not be absolutely perfect, but that's okay. Because really, you know, we're just interested in sort of the overall shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, but now we can see that when I tile this out, I have a puzzle piece interlocking type of a shape. So let's use this with space fill. So I'm just getting my copies and getting rid of them there. I need some hearts. I think I have those over here. And so now I've got hearts and I've got this kind of postage stamp shape here. I'll select them both. Go up to the window menu and to astute graphics to open up the space fill panel. Click make. And then now I've got my tossed hearts. Let's randomize this a little bit more. Okay, and now what I'll do is put this into pattern editing mode. 
Now I could expand this by clicking the button here, but it's gonna get expanded anyway when I go into pattern editing mode. So let's do that. Object, pattern, make. Okay, so here we are. And I'm going to use the pattern tile tool. This is gonna allow me to sort of position these so they're right on top of each other using these lines kind of like a guide, these wavy lines here. And once they're matched up, then I don't need them anymore. So let's go back, get the selection tool and see, it looks like everything is grouped together. So I need to ungroup it so I can select the wavy line shape and delete it. And then if I back out a little bit from here, we can see, let's turn off the tile edge. You can see, I mean, we are, I think, 90% of the way to having a nice randomly tossed pattern. But, you know, to make my corrections, I'll come in here, first of all, and ungroup this. And then just do those little things that you need to do, whether that means like, okay, I have too many reds right here. I'm going to take one of these, use my eyedropper tool to select another one you know, that sort of thing. All of these little edits that you need to work on to just close up some spacing wherever you see it not quite working out right. But we've gotten a long way by using space fill and using that wavy shape to get us to this point. So from here, it's just minor adjustments. And then I can exit and grab another rectangle. And let's go in here and apply my new tossed pattern. So that's using space fill plus a little puzzle piece shape hack to make tossed repeat patterns in Illustrator. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator online and you can check out my membership community on my website, lauracoylecreative.com. If this tutorial was helpful to you, please give me a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you for watching.